Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to take a look at the quantization of the two modes in which a gas molecule can have energy, where it's quantized. So we have the vibrational mode and we have the rotational mode. What's interesting about the vibrational mode is that the various energy levels from the ground state to the first excited mode to the second excited mode to the third excited mode, the difference in the energy between each of the levels is exactly the same. Notice that the ground state, the energy contained within the vibrational mode is one half times h times f. h is Planck's constant, so h is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. And f would be the frequency of the vibrational mode of that particular oscillator. So it depends upon the structure of the molecule, the mass, and the spring constant, which is basically the force caused by the bonding between the atoms. You can see here that the ground state is one half times the product of the Planck's constant times the frequency, then it's three halves to the next level, five halves, seven halves, and so forth, so that the difference between the energy level is quantized. So the only way that the atom can get to the next vibrational state is by adding the amount of energy required to exactly go from one state to the very next state. Well, not necessarily exactly because there could be additional energy obtained at the same time instead of just only having vibrational mode transitions there could be a combination of vibrational mode and rotational mode so then the energy required would be a sum of the energy required to go to the next state or the next vibrational mode plus the energy required to go to the next rotational mode at the same time and so that's kind of the key in which gases in the atmosphere absorb energy we'll explain that in much more detail later here what we see is that we have a diatomic molecule like this. This molecule can rotate in a rotational motion like this about the z-axis or in a rotational mode like this about the uh, z-y plane, so to speak, or inside the z-y plane. What's interesting here is that it can go in a quantum mode to the next level, to the next level, to the next level, but each time it does so, the amount of energy required to go to the next level increases. So let's say that we have a certain base state to go to the next, to go to the next higher state that increases to two times whatever the base energy is. Then to go to the next state, it will require four times the base energy. To the next state, six times the energy. To the next state, eight times the energy and so forth. So you can see the pattern that for each next quantum jump, you need, again, a quantum amount of energy, but the amount of energy you need increases as you go to higher and higher and higher rotational state. That is different than what we have here. That is the key to the effect that we see in the atmosphere, how different molecules can absorb a certain range of frequencies because a combination of a fixed increase plus a variable increase gives you a lot of, ver a lot of different types of frequencies that can be absorbed. And then through uh, some other interaction between the molecules, that gets smeared out and we can then see how a, how a range of frequencies are absorbed. But at least we need to understand the basic principles here. The basic principles is that in a vibrational mode or rotational mode, the only way that energy can be increased is through quantum jumps, depending upon the base mode frequency of the oscillator or based upon the base energy of the rotational mode. And then to go to the next higher energy level in the rotational mode, the amount of energy that you require to go higher and higher and higher increases with a sudden, certain predictable step. And in this case, the amount of energy you need to go to the next higher, higher step or higher mode is again quantized, but the, the quantization remains the same as we go to higher and higher energy modes in the vibrational mode. And then we'll see how they interact together to form the kind of, a, the kind of what we call uh, absorption ranges that we will see in the next few videos that explains how exactly these gases absorb energy in the atmosphere. 